We designed appropriate empiric therapy for HAP and VAP and we de-escalated from empiric therapy to pathogen-directed therapy. We evaluated patients' clinical stability to determine IV to PO antibiotic switch and recommended appropriate duration of therapy. We also developed a patient-specific plan for prevention of pneumonia. Now, let's develop a patient-specific plan for prevention of influenza. Now, let's take a look at composition of influenza vaccines. Prior to this year, we used to have trivalent and quadrivalent vaccines. Trivalent vaccines included three strains, so two strains of influenza A and one strain of influenza B, which was the Victoria lineage. Quadrivalent vaccines included the three that are included in trivalent plus an additional strain against the influenza B which happens to be the Yamagata lineage. Now this year we only have quadrivalent vaccines available on the market so we no longer have to think about trivalent or quadrivalent. Now one thing to note is that the influenza A H1N1 strain that's used in the egg-based vaccines is slightly different than the one that's used in cell cultured or recombinant vaccine. Now let's take a look at CDC ACIP recommendations for 2021-22 influenza season. Routine annual seasonal influenza vaccination is recommended for all persons aged 6 months and older without contraindications. Now, there are some nuances between the different vaccine, vaccine formulations. However, the CDC wants as many people to get vaccinated as soon as possible. So, therefore, no, prefer, uh, no preferential recommendation is made for one influenza vaccine product over another. It does take the body two weeks for the full response and mount to mount antibodies. So, it is recommended that vaccination should be done uh, or be offered by the end of October in order to allow the body to mount antibodies prior to start of influenza season. However, because the antibodies wear off throughout the season, for non-pregnant adults, early vaccination, for example, in July and August, should be avoided unless there is concern that later vaccination might not be possible. So we don't want to lose uh, patients to follow up uh, but, you know, if we are comfortable that the patient will come back, it's best to avoid vaccinating them in July and August because the antibodies wear off throughout the season and the flu season typically peaks between Christmas and Valentine's Day and most often uh, around Valentine's Day in February. Now, having said that, revaccination later in the season for persons already vaccinated is not recommended and primarily for two reasons because it is not proven that revaccination will actually increase efficacy and two, if revaccination is recommended then we will have a shortage of vaccines. It's important to note that all COVID-19 vaccines that are available in the US can be co-administered with influenza vaccine on the same day. Here are the vaccine, influenza vaccine formulations that are available this, this year. So we have the live attenuated influenza vaccine, which is egg-based. Uh, the brand uh, or trade name is Flumist. These are all quadrivalent. Now, the live attenuated vaccine is only recommended for age 2 years through 49. And this is primarily because of the uh, experience with reduced efficacy of this vaccine. And... You know, children under the age of two years are at high risk for influenza complications, as well as people older than age 50. So therefore, it, because this vaccine might be less efficacious, it's recommended to avoid it in high risk patients. So it's only recommended for two years through 49. Next, we have several products that are egg based, and these are the standard dose in activated influenza vaccine that are recommended for age uh, six months and older. Now we have a couple of formulations that are not egg-based. So now we have the cell cultured inactivated influenza vaccine. Now cell-based refers to how the flu vaccine is made. Most inactivated influenza vaccines are produced by growing influenza viruses in eggs. 
The influenza viruses used in the cell-based vaccine are grown in culture cells of mammalian origin instead of in hen's eggs. Now, flu cell vax is only FDA approved for age 2 years and older. We also have recombinant influenza vaccine or uh, flu block and this one is only approved for age 18 and older and this one uses recombinant DNA technology so it is not egg based. And then uh, back to a couple of egg based that are specifically designed for the elderly. So one is an adjuvanted um, vaccine, Fluad. It has the standard dose, but because it has adjuvants in it, it actually increases, increases the immunogenicity. And this is recommended uh, for ages 65 years and older because elderly are, because of their immune system is weakened, they're less likely to have an immunogenic response. So these adjuvants will help increase the immunogenicity in elderly. Alternatively, we have a uh, high dose of inactivated influenza vaccine. So basically, because of the reduced uh, immune response in elderly, if we give a higher dose, it can actually boost the immunogenicity. Although not common, you may come across patients who have egg allergy. As I mentioned, majority of the influenza vaccine formulations are grown in eggs. Only cell culture grown and recombinant influenza vaccines are considered egg free. So should we only give uh, these vaccines to patients with egg allergy? Well, first, it's important to know that CDC recommends considering patient observation for 15 minutes after administration of any vaccine, not just the flu shot. Secondly, if the patient's reaction was only hives, they should receive any licensed and recommended influenza vaccine, including any inactivated influenza vaccine as well as recombinant or a live uh, at uh, attenuated uh, vaccine. But if the symptoms were angioedema, respiratory distress, lightheadedness, or recurrent MSs, or if the patient required previously uh, uh, epinephrine, they may receive any licensed and recommended influenza vaccine, including any inactivated in influ influenza vaccine that's egg-based or recombinant or live attenuated. However, a vaccine other than cell culture or recombinant should be administered in an inpatient or outpatient medical setting in case the patient has um, a reaction. And cross-reactivity between egg allergy and vaccines that are grown in eggs is extremely uncommon. Now, what if the patient has allergy to previous influenza vaccine, not egg? So in general, we can consider three different groups. So the egg-based vaccines, cell cultured or recombinant. So let's consider what happens if the patient had severe allergy, for example, anaphylaxis to any of these. So if a patient has anaphylaxis to any egg-based uh, vaccine, any all egg-based vaccines will be contraindicated. However, the cell cultured and the recombinant will be precaution. And in general, precaution use should occur in an inpatient or outpatient medical setting under supervision. Now, if the patient had anaphylaxis to the cell culture, not only all egg base are contraindicated, but also the cell culture will be uh, contraindicated. However, the recombinant vaccine will be an option for this patient. And if the patient had anaphylaxis to recombinant vaccine, not only all egg based vaccines will be contraindicated, but also the recombinant. But for this patient, a cell cultured vaccine will be an option. And of course, if the vaccine that caused the reaction is unknown, then an allergist can be consulted uh, to identify the component that caused the reaction and come up with a recommendation. One thing that you may encounter in practice is patients who are pregnant. So in general, inactivated uh, seasonal influenza vaccine is indicated in pregnancy. Live attenuated influenza vaccine is actually contraindicated in pregnancy. So in pregnancy, you should avoid live attenuated vaccine. A pregnant patient should actually receive the flu shot, uh, you know, as long as the pregnancy is during uh, the flu season, ideally either before pregnancy or during any of the trimesters. Now, although the CDC doesn't prefer any specific products other than saying uh, live attenuated is contraindicated, 
uh, it's important to know that some of the more recently licensed products are actually uh, that we have less experience with their use in pregnancy. That includes, you know, quadrivalent um, formulations are relatively new compared to trivalent and cell culture base is also relatively new. In fact, uh, for recombinant influenza vaccine, actually very limited data. So although those are not contraindicated, you know, you may want to avoid them if you have the option. But the bottom line is the CDC says, you know, you know, if this is the last thing that you have in your in your stock, you should still give it to the patient. When it comes to immunocompromised patients, so either patients who are taking uh, medications who are uh, immunosuppressive or if they have immunodeficiency diseases such as HIV, uh, live attenuated um, influenza vaccine is contraindicated, so you should give any of the inactivated vaccines. Now, what if the patient is taking influenza antiviral medications? In general, administration of inactivated influenza vaccine as well as the recombinant influenza vaccine is acceptable. However, we have to be careful if the patient is receiving antiviral agents with the live attenuated influenza vaccine. And the reason is that live attenuated influenza vaccine actually needs to replicate inside the patient in order to have immunogenicity. So we have to make sure that during the time that the, vi the vaccine is uh, replicating, there is no active drug in the body. So in general, it takes two weeks for the average person to develop antibodies to the virus. So it's okay to take any of these agents 14 days after the uh, vaccine. However, how long before giving the vaccine depends on the agent. So for oseltamivir and zanamivir, it is generally okay to give the vaccine as long as uh, 48 hours before the vaccine, the drugs have been stopped. However, Pramivir and Baloxavir have significantly longer half-life, so it is recommended to give the vaccine five days after Pramivir has been stopped and 17 days after Baloxavir has been stopped. Now, when it comes to el elderly, um, age 65 years and older, the issue is that the antibody titers actually decline a few months after immunization. And, and that's because, uh, you know, as we get older, our immune system doesn't work as well. Now, the recommendation of CDC is that any age-appropriate inactivated influenza vaccine um, should be acceptable option for, for elderly. So either standard dose or high dose, either trivalent or quadrivalent or unadjuvanted or adjuvanted. Uh, or uh, recombinant influenza vaccine. And that's because they want to vaccinate as many people as possible. So anything that you have is an acceptable um, option uh, for elderly uh, with the exception of live attenuated vaccine. So live attenuated vaccine is not recommended for anyone um, you know, age 50 and older. So we do have the high dose inactivated influenza vaccine. And you know, we have a study that they actually compared the high dose to standard dose um, and we found that there was a 24% greater relative efficacy with the high dose. So, you know, although CDC doesn't have a preference for it, if you do have the high dose, those elderly patients would actually benefit from the high dose compared to standard dose. But if you're out of the high dose, you should not ask the patient to come back when you have the high dose because the CDC says that, you know, if if you have the opportunity to vaccinate people, you should do it on the spot because there is a good chance of losing patients to follow up. So if you ask the patient to come back when you actually have the high dose, there's a good chance that they're not coming back. So while they're there and you have the opportunity to vaccinate them, you should vaccinate them with any formulation that you have. Now with the recombinant influenza vaccine, we actually saw a better response in patients who are elderly, so in the subgroup uh, of patients who had 65 years of age and older, there was actually 17% higher efficacy with recombinant influenza vaccine as opposed to the standard dose uh, inactivated influenza vaccine. The point of adjuvanted um, influenza vaccine is to actually boost the immune response to it. So we do use uh, substances that actually are immunoge immunogenic. So MF59 is a squalene based oil in water emulsion and it actually acts by, by both recruiting antigen presenting cells to the administration site and also by increasing the binding strength of the antibody to the influenza virus which results in a more efficient antigen uptake 
processing and transportation to the lymph nodes. And in studies, we saw a 63% greater relative efficacy uh, in elderly patients. So again, uh, although these are nice to give to elderly, you know, you should give the elderly any formulation that you have uh, in stock. This concludes this presentation.